Alrighty, so this question here is really about uh, the domains of life and how they how we got three of them. Okay, so there are we have these three domains. So we have bacteria. Sorry, my pen is something funny, but uh, bacteria is one. And then we have a two more branches. So we have the archaea, which are also uh, single-celled organisms, and then eukarya. And then when we when we think of uh, life, this is what we tend to think about, right? Um, So this is going to be the plants and animals and birds and uh, fungi, etc. And so then when we look at these three dom uh, domains, it, it begs the question, why do single cell organisms take up two branches and then everything else has its own? Like That seems strange, that slime molds and and microsporidia and all these things are all going to fall in here. And then we just have bacteria and archaea also getting their own categories. And so uh, this particular scientist that this question is about, uh, Carl, uh, I guess I don't know what country he's from, but let's say Wessie. Um, knowing country of origin would help with pronouncing that last name. Uh, but let's say Carl, he he did something pretty clever, and he traced a conserved, or by conserved we mean relatively unchanged, section of genetic material, and when doing so, determined that that we had these like three main branches by considering the piece of genetic material that changes the least, and so our ribosomal RNA is going to be very conserved compared to other pieces of our genetics that change based on our environment and evolution in general. So it's our ribosomal RNA. And for short, this is just the rRNA. Uh, unsurprisingly, R for ribosomal, and that means that the correct answer to this question is going to be B.